guys, how's it going? Welcome back. First impression video of the new Stoger A30 combo. Alright, so this is a carbine air rifle. I reread the box. That's why our barrel is so short. It's carbine. Um, very easy to cock this thing. Like, way too easy. I love it. Um, it's probably, well, it's probably just as easy as my classic 22. Um, anyways, so if you watched my unboxing video, but in case you didn't, my QB78177 Cal air rifle that I bought from Canadian Tire last year um, went in for a replacement under warranty, right? Because it developed power issues. And uh, the new one, I'm only on like my third set of bottles. Once again, we have power issues. And yeah, it's just like, this is ridiculous. Like, what is going on here? Um, so, my, my QB78, which is also a Beeman of the 22 caliber version, I actually bought it from Airgun Source, and that thing is still running just great. No problems ever. But the 177 one from Canadian Tire, issues. Um, it's not the first gun I've had issues with, um, with Canadian Tire lately. I also had an issue with a Phoenix rifle and um, a 1077 as well. But anyways, so, um, not getting too much into the whole backstory, we'll save another video. I have a bit of a rant video coming up about Canadian Tire as to this whole ordeal of even getting this thing, but um, the retail on this thing is $379.99 at Canadian Tire, normal price. Uh, it's on sale for a few dollars cheaper, and uh, it is going on sale once again in July for about $250. Um, which um, actually is not 250 it's about 270 something I think yeah about 270 something anyhow the rifle itself is wonderful okay um, it is definitely not worth no 379 um, Cabela's sells this rifle in Canada for $250 all day long um, and uh, it is definitely worth 250 in my opinion uh, the scope on this thing is identical to the center point scope on the Benjamin Classic 22, except for, of course, the Classic has flip-up lens covers. This has this system, and this ribbing is different. Uh, also, this one goes from 200 yards to 300, then infinity. The Classic uh, center point scope goes up to 200 yards and then infinity. Otherwise, the rest of the scope, all the way from there to the back, is exactly the same scope. Uh, same scope rail system too is what comes with the Classic 22. Um, now, Stoger actually pre-installed the stock or the the scope onto the mount, which was absolutely stupid, I think, because you have to remove the scope in order to get at the scope stop screw, which you must use on this rifle. There's a there's a cutout on the breech, and you've got to make sure that screw goes in there. So you have to turn it down a few turns first, so that it catches it, and then get it lined up. Then you clamp this down with all four screws and clamp it tight, okay? Um, and then you can drive that screw down and get it nice and tight. Then you're not going to get any creep whatsoever. The scope itself holds zero extremely well. Now, I have sighted this in before firing off, you know, a whack load of pellets for break-in. But I wanted to see how well it would sight in anyways with some pointed pellets and I also checked some hollow points without changing the uh, lineup. This gun will sight in Crossman pointed 7.4 grains really nice and tight for grouping. Now the gun is still not broken in but I've got roughly a little over 100 rounds through it um, and it is fairly stable. It is a different gun to shoot. The recoil works completely different. It's got a little bit more of a violent smack to it even than the Classic 22. Um, even though it's just as easy to cock, it's just the way the system works. Um, and with having a different kind of a stock too, of course, everything is also different in how you got to hold this for the ultimate accuracy. I'm definitely going to install a bipod onto this thing. I'm going to have to get another kit so I can just put the single um, mount on here instead of like a, a Picatinny rail. I'm just going to put the single sling mount uh, for a bipod but it definitely could benefit from a bipod for ultimate accuracy. Freehand shooting though, uh, not too shabby. It's going to swim a little bit till you get used to it, um, but otherwise you can hold it pretty good. Um, now, I'm not going to show you any results today of you know what I got because it still needs break-in time to settle down um, 
and then of course I gotta you know tweak the sighting a little bit tighter I did get a few bullseyes in case you're wondering um, but then I got some other shots that are just outside of the bullseye so it does group um, really well even though it's not broken in yet but I want to get that grouping tighter and that means breaking the gun in so I figure around 300 rounds that should be more than enough to break this gun in and uh, it should sight in really really well now taking shots without changing sight positions with the hollow points which are also a little bit heavier there are 7.9 grain pointed for 7.4 um, definitely they could be tweaked in um, they were a little out and a little high uh, but that's okay I expected to see that because the gun will choose the pellet that's the way guns work like it or not firearms or air rifles air pistols they choose the pellet not you so make sure you stock up on a lot of different pellets and then write down for each gun the pellets it likes the most with. Um, I didn't try the open sights at all, but they are very nice open sights, even for fiber optics. And you do have a fiber optic front sight. This is also uh, kind of like recessed in a bit in the front end uh, of the muzzle. So you've got lots of muzzle protection. Now I did take a quick look at the crown on it. The crown is actually really good. Um, very very well made gun. Um, I really got to give them kudos. Um, when it comes to air guns, they know what they're doing. Um, does have a auto safety as well, um, which will automatically kick in or you can manually do it yourself, but what's the point? You cock the gun, it's going to do it for you, uh, but you just push in to take it off safe, which is a nice feature to have. You cannot accidentally fire this thing. Um, <clears throat> it does have a two-stage adjustable trigger, although right now it's a little hard to tell where the second stage ends and or the first stage ends and the second stage starts. So I'm thinking I might um, actually loosen up the, uh, the trigger a little bit more so it smooths it out a little bit. Um, but otherwise it is very nice out of the box and it's a very nice grippy trigger too. It's got like some ribbings on here that grab onto your finger so that's actually quite nice. Um, very nice length on the trigger as well so even for, for me shooting that's just more than enough so that my finger can't roll off the edge which is good. Uh, they use Allen key screws uh, to hold the front up and of course you've got one screw down here that's a star screwdriver that holds the back of the action in, into the stock. And like I said, very robust stock, not made for small hands. Um, so this is more of an adult gun, not a kid's gun. Okay, um, And because of the way the distancing works and the thickness down in here, this is definitely more of an adult gun. Now, it is also an ambidextrous stock, so whether you're a left-handed shooter or a right-handed shooter, it makes no difference whatsoever. Very nice rubber butt pad. Um, also has this, you know, cutout thing that gives it a bit of a cool look. And this is kind of like a raised cheek piece kind of idea, which is nice. Uh, though it's not adjustable, um, it is nice either way. So they've got nice stippling on this as well. It feels so good to hold this rifle. And it doesn't feel super heavy. It actually has really good weight distribution balance to it. So I really like it. Uh, the scope is not a mill dot though, but it is adjustable optical. So um, <coughs> I did bore sight this thing. And when you bore sight a um, gun in, of course you use a laser bore sight or some type uh, for your gun. Um, you leave your focus ring all the way in. You leave this on three times zoom which is your bottom end, and then you leave this at your smallest yardage, and that's how you, you bore sight the gun in. Now, I bore sighted this, and I think um, Stoger had this thing probably set up for around 100 yards from the factory, which is very common for the majority of scopes to pretty much, whether it's a non-PAL air gun, a PAL air gun, or a real firearm, doesn't matter where the scope's going, manufacturers usually set them up. Uh, at 100 yards. So bore sighting, I didn't have to do a lot of adjustment, but I did notice it did go down rather low and to the right a bit. Um, and there's a lot of click range. Like you would think, you know, even at 45 feet, which is where I bore sighted, which is where I shoot from, um, you would think, you know, maybe five little clicks, right? So from, say, the zero to the one, right? Five clicks worth. That would make a big difference. No, it doesn't. It actually makes a very small difference. Uh, so it's very precision and accuracy. Uh, the stiffness of the clickers is really good, just like the center point scope on my Benjamin Classic 22 rifle. Um, so it, it, it does not have locking turrets, but it will actually hold zero 
really tight. Okay, so you can rest assured it is a very good scope. They definitely did a good job with the scope thing. Okay, and it is a Stoger branded uh, 3x9x40 uh, AO. And like I said, it did come with this bar mount, which is probably one of the best uh, mounts for air rifles that are nitro piston or Springer powered. Um, I have this on my classic Benjamin, and man, it is really nice, and it is like unmovable. Once you have set the scope stop screw in place and clamped her down, it ain't going anywhere. So that's that's nice. Um, no illumination on this scope at all, which is good because I don't care for that feature anyway, even though a lot of my scopes have it. Um, we did do a crony test as part of the unboxing. I'm going to have to re-crony the gun. All right, because it's going to need the break in. So I got about roughly about another 200 rounds, and this thing should be broken in. Um, so I'm not going to monkey with the sights for again for about another 200 shots. Then at that point, once I've gotten a little over 300 rounds into it, then I'll dial in the pellets a little tighter. And I'm going to start first with those pointed pellets. I like pointed pellets, even though I'm a target shooter mainly. Um, you know, but. The, pellet, the pointed pellets seem to give you the best speed results too um, over a domed pellet or a hollow point. Um, but we're going to see how well we can dial them in. And if we have too much variations, uh, then definitely going to have to try a different pellet, obviously. Okay. Uh, I do also have some Predator pellets in 177 caliber on their way here, uh, which we're going to try through this gun too to see if it loves them like my other guns in 22 caliber adore. They all adore the Predator pellets. Most accurate pellet in any of those guns so far. Uh, but every gun is different, of course. This one may hate them. Who knows? Um, but nonetheless, I am pretty impressed with the gun. All right, I'm definitely very impressed with it, and I'm sure it is going to last me for a long time. My next mission in life, of course, is to find out about replacement parts, parts diagram, in case I have to do anything to this. Now it does come with a two year warranty uh, from the manufacturer. If you do happen to buy this from Canadian Tire, do not pay retail, get it on the cheapest sale price possible, um, and then you'd be okay. Because if you paid, like, like I said, in July it's going on for like 270 something, so even at Cabela's for 250, by the time you get the shipping in there and the taxes, it's actually going to cost you more than to go to your local Canadian Tire store if you wait for the July sale. Um, but right now it's on sale and yeah, you would be actually in the ahead of the game financially. If you're going to buy this right now, go to Cabela's and get it there instead of Canadian Tire. Now if you live outside of Canada, of course, you guys have Cabela's in the States. You've got all kinds of other gun places and you're probably going to find it a lot cheaper. Canadian Tire is just notorious for overpricing a lot of their guns. Um, but anyways... Um, so far though, very impressed. We do have a full synthetic stock on here, synthetic trigger guard. Um, so that's fine. It's, it's not a deal breaker by any means. Um, but it is nice and I love the fact that it's all black. I love black stuff. It's cool. One of my favorite colors is actually black. Um, however, my first impressions of this gun, very good gun. Uh, you're definitely getting a lot of gun for your money. Accuracy so far for a non-broken in gun is doing really well. Once it completely breaks in, it should do even better. Speeds right now are kind of a little bit fluctuating, but that's generally a normal thing. This thing is going to diesel for a bit, which is another reason why you got to pop at least 300 rounds through any brand new Springer or Nitro gun. They're going to diesel for usually 100 to 200 rounds, so I would say the magic number is usually about 300, and then you can do a full sight in with your scope, but at least get it sighted in close enough that you can get some half-decent grouping, even if you're not hitting the bullseye too much, and you're still going to not hit the bullseye that well anyways for a while till you get used to how the gun reacts, because when this thing goes off, it's got one heck of a thud to it, um, okay, and of course you've got to get used to the trigger, um, and some guns need to be held like this, some guns need to be held like this. Some of them have to go like this. You know, it's, it's, and some of them just have to use a bipod and that's it. Um, it just depends on the gun, right? They all react differently. You know, a Springer isn't a Springer and a Nitro is not a Nitro. And the same goes for CO2, PCP, and so on. They're, they're all different the way they're going to react 
on how they're held and some of them will be better than others in different positions for holding. Um, but so far this one here it seems to be really good this way. I have tried it out this way and it's it's not too bad but a little too much this way. Um, holding the main fist underneath that seems to be extremely stable on this gun and when it goes off the grouping still stays reasonably well. Um, but I'm going to have to get used to it a bit more. So you won't see any grouping tests uh, for a little bit. Um, and we are running into some crummy weather starting tomorrow. But when it gets nice out again, we've got a nice day for shooting. Um, we'll definitely do some more shooting. And probably the same day I will do a grouping test. Because I'll probably have about 500 rounds through the thing by then. Um, just to, right now, I would say it's a fantastic gun. Okay. Uh, but I'm not prepared to give you guys a star rating because this is not a review. This is just my first impressions of it so far. Um, if you do want to use a sunshade on this, you can. Um, the ring on the front actually does undo, which we did show you that in the unboxing. I'm going to try to keep this at 18 yard setting. Um, so the ring will undo just like this. Very super fine threads like they all are. Um, you can get sunshades actually for a really decent price for any scope um, off of Amazon. And I'm going to be ordering some in actually for all my guns that have scopes that I can use these on. Because uh, the sunshade would come in very handy, especially for... Um, I'm at the front of the house uh, when I'm shooting. And uh, the sunlight when I'm out there shooting tends to be a bit of a pain. So I'd like to get uh, a sunshade on here, even if it's a shorter profile. Um, I'm definitely going to put one on to help out a bit more. But otherwise, that's it for now. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and for spending the time. And we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.